make the film and explain why I tied our towels up. There's a good boy. So I've got this young horse here that's here for being broke. He's very quiet, sensible. And just to show you, you know, why I do it and what I do, it's best to have a horse like this than someone who's going to fidget around the whole time. Yeah? But you get a horse that don't like you behind him. You know, he don't want you there. Or he does a little noise, a silly little noise. You could do exactly the same thing at the front of him, like a dog bowl, drop it on the floor, bag of crisps, whatever you want to mention, he wouldn't bother. As soon as you do it at the back, there's a little bit of tension, a little bit of tightening, a little bit of not being sure. Obviously, when you drive horse, you're doing it from behind. So what we want to do is make sure everything behind is perfect. Um, so, you know, the noise we can make. The, so but you've got to do it gently, you've got to do it slowly, you've got to tailor it to each horse. So what I'm saying here, this is not a panacea for all horses that don't like a little bit of noise behind them, but I'm talking about horses that don't like a, a tiny little bit of noise. Ring a bell. Um, as I say, a crisp bag, the crunch of that, a plastic bottle, that type of thing, yeah? Other horses might be anything behind them, they'd lash out and kick. I'm just saying this is for the ones that's just a little bit unsure. Tuck their tail down a little bit, not quite sure. So this is, he's a nice laid back fella, this one. And uh, we'll just come here. So what I'll do, I'll have my piece of string with a ring on. So we've got a stainless steel ring, yeah? And a bit of paracord I like using, that's best for me, yeah? So what we do, we divide the tail into three. It doesn't have to be pretty or anything like that. But what we want to do is we want to make it so it, it doesn't come out. That's a bad thing um, if it comes undone. So we're just playing it in now. So I've got these two going around and the strings coming down in this dark here, here, yeah, as I do it. So just playing them around lovely there. That's good. And I'll give that a little pull down when I get this far. Just to lengthen the call to be a little bit longer than the actual hair. And as we, we plait up, you know, obviously, you know, you, ladies will know when you plait a child's hair up, it loses length. So. Down we come like that. And I'll take one strand and just put a loop round just to hold it closed for a minute or two, yeah, like that. Then I'll hold the whole thing, put my arm here through, put it under, take that and pull it through, right? And we want to come down to the end of the dock, yeah? So he's finished there, that's his dock, can you see? We're not interfering, you must never tie anything around there. I mean, obviously, you cut off the blood su supply, you could do, and you could lose the towel. You know, dock him, in other words. So, I'm just tying that off now. With this paracord, you can afford to put a few knots in, and you can always undo them. So, now we've got our ring, yeah, that you see on a lot of the films. So, two things you've got now. You've got the weight of this. So when he moves his tail naturally himself, he's bumping himself, yeah? Quite heavy, this piece of tail, all plaited up. Fairly heavy, not too heavy, it's not gonna hurt him, yeah? And then what we would do is, I'd just leave him in his stable, like that, for you know a period of time, and I'd observe him, see what he's telling me, well, yeah, I've accepted that, I'm happy. Once we, once he's done that and he's accepted it and he's happy, I'll get a piece of cord. Please don't ever clip a lead rope on. Like, I explained this to a fella. He asked me once when he was in the yard, why'd you do that? And I explained it to him. Next thing I hear, he's clipped a lead rope on it. You know, silly, like, don't listen. So when he put the lead rope on, then he all danced about a bit in the stable, got the lead rope around his leg and tied himself up. Well, obviously that wasn't any good, was it? It didn't help the horse. It hindered things, made things worse. So then what I do, I have a nice piece of this type of cord, yeah, that I can let go of any time 
and out it comes. And that's why I use a nice stainless steel ring like this one, yeah? Because you just don't get caught up, it's nice and polished, you know? So then what I can do is do all sorts of things, yeah? Now we're using this quiet one, this quiet little cob. So I can pull that, let it go, yeah? I can come from side to side. So when I get five minutes, or just passing, or taking a set of harness off of one horse, I might just go in for a couple of minutes, just pull his tail about and get him used to that going on, yeah? Now you can see this horse, he's not bothered by it. It's the first time he's ever done it, you know, done it to this horse, but his legs at rest, he's happy. One that is a little bit behind, so what I mean is something like a crisp bag behind it. Um, you drop something on the floor behind it, and ooh, uptight, frightened. But not enough that you might notice, that's where it comes in understanding horses. You know, it's something I would pick up on, perhaps someone else wouldn't. Just the movement, the tightness, the tail going in here. You know, just not quite happy when you're behind it, mucking him out. That's why we like to do our own mucking out, because obviously then you can see exactly what's happening. But you'll see the horse put his tail here tight. His quarters will drop a little bit, yeah? He's not quite happy, and this is what this is for. So then what we can do when we're passing is come up behind him, obviously by the side of him here, and I can do this, yeah? Pull that, yeah? I can pull it up there, like that. Not hurting him, don't ever hurt him, just gently like that, yeah? Now, if this was horse that was upset by this, I wouldn't be pulling his old, I'd just do that. Or as I said, I'd leave it, you know, for a day in there like that, or morning or an afternoon, and see if he's, you know, just flopping it around. And what you will find, and the most wonderful thing to see, is they start making it a game themselves. And they'll be doing this, <laughs> bumping this side, bumping that side, flicking it up there, flicking it up there. Not being upset by it, but actually making a game. If you can get that, that's wonderful. So by putting this piece of string on, I can pull it out any time, as I say, and it's free, yeah? It's never gonna get caught up. It's never gonna get be a problem. Then what you can do, right? I don't recommend anybody to do anything. The purpose of these films is to show you my philosophy on breaking a horse and training it. So it's not do this with every horse that's a bit funny behind and it'll be a miracle it works. You have gotta know your horses. But you see that there, happy. Nice and happy, he's not bothered at all. What I can do, you see his leg gone straight at rest, yeah? I can put this between here now, right? And I can just pull that there a little bit, just gently. If he was to dance about or be upset, we can stop, we can hold on to one piece and it will come loose. So I can do that, yeah? Yeah, my baby boy. Okay. So we can take this out now. And we're left with this ring. You can hang anything on there yeah, as long as you can get it off, yeah? You've got to know when you can put it on. You've got to be able to understand the horse and how he's coping with what you're asking of him. When you can do that, you can do anything with them, obviously. You know, they get to trust you, they know you're not going to hurt them. But a lot of people don't run away with the idea that every tail you see tied up is for that reason. In fact, it's very rare, um, really, that we need to do this with horse. Often when you'll see the tail tied up and we'll use electrical tape to hold it up, you know, you can't see any ring or anything. It'll just be a tail tied like that. That is so we can see how they're moving behind. A tail covers up so much that when I'm driving up behind the horse or I've got him on the long reins, you know, when we put them around ourselves, you can then see how he's moving. When you've got a tail hanging down, you don't know and you can see how relaxed he is. Because horse that's relaxed, he'll carry that, although it's heavy, he'll carry his tail out there, somewhat like that, yeah? Maybe that's a slight exaggeration with this type of animal, but he'd carry it out there, yeah? If he was unhappy, he would bend this in and put it underneath, yeah? But try and put it between his legs. So when you see him on our films, you might see one with his tail tied. 
I don't know what percentage, but a big percentage of the time, the reason we've done it is not because the horse is not happy, yeah, necessarily, but it will let us see how he's moving behind. Is he going to brush? How he's putting his feet down? You can learn so much, and I can say to the farrier, we had him like that. You can see by the way his foot's worn, maybe we would need to do that. He'll go, or we can see how he's brushing. So we'll put some brushing boots on. A lot of young horses might, well, not lose some some horse, young horses want a brushing boot on. Obviously, you don't want them knocking themselves, but youngsters happen, newly shod, still a bit gangly, you know, and they, they can do that. So we can put them on and then. I can, Melanie will actually film that, show it back in slow motion and say, right, he's gone round this corner, he's gone round that corner, we've stopped him, we've put him forward, and not once has he actually touched. So now we know we can remove them, because the worst thing in the world is to have a little mark there, then remove it and knock a little scab off, you know, which obviously is no good. So that's the reasons we do that. You could hang on here now, um, we might hang on, say, a little plastic bag, so that once he's used to this, then he might go bump, bump there, and he can hear the plastic behind him. But you've got to know what you're doing. You've got to be careful. All of these films are my philosophy on what I do, because people have asked. That's why I'm, I'm showing you. So that's basically why you see the towels tied up. Yeah. I hope that's of interest to you. But that's why we, you see them tied up. 90% of the time, I would say it is 90% of the time. They'll be up like that and there'll be tape round, electrical tape, and that's all you'll see. But then it gives me a lovely clear view between their legs when I'm up in the driver's seat. And your Melanie will be travelling along in the car or she'll be down on, on her knees crouched down and she'll film as they're coming past, you know, and then be able to put the camera between. And then we learn so much from that that you can prevent them damaging themselves, you know, or you might want to put a different type of shoe on or recommend that when they go home they have a different type of shoe or we'll alter the shoe while they're here. So that's basically why we do that. This is a nice little cob to demonstrate on because he's quiet behind and obviously <laughs> he don't mind what we do. <laughs> the other thing that it's very good for, when I long rein horse, you know, most of you will know now that I turn the horses around me and I stay still, which, you know, um, when he hasn't got a great long towel down, when you've got your rein coming round here or coming from the other side, yeah, when you're standing and running the horse around you, it's a lot better to have this up because normally you sit, your rein sits just above the hock and therefore you don't get the towel in it, keep pulling, because obviously we try and produce the softest mouth possible. Well, if he's flishing his towel, he's pulling on his own rein, which is going to make a difference. So yeah, they're the reasons we tied a tailor.